All right, guys, um, the video I recorded in class did not work, so I'm going to redo the whole thing for you, but I'm going to do it fast. You guys may not have time to do everything with me because I'm going to move super fast. So what I want you to do is do what I'm doing. You may have to pause the video as you go, but do your best because if you come at me with some work that's not great, um, it's going to impact your grade. In class, I paused a lot so the kids had time to do their that do their thing and then I went on to the next thing but for this video I'm gonna go real quick and um, you need to pause between each activity okay so I'm gonna start with a medium-sized flat brush it's dry it has not been wet I'm gonna get a little bit of red paint and I'm gonna paint a line across the top of my paper now what I notice is the paint starts to tear it starts to um, immediately start skipping and catch the texture of the paper. So that's not great. I don't want that. I want to have my paint flow and get some kind of a viscosity, which means the amount of flow that my paint does. So I'm going to go here and get some water. And you're going to need red, yellow, blue, white. I'm going to put some water here. And I'm going to pull some of this paint into the water. I'm going to get a little more water and pull some more in. And I'm going to paint that across here. Now, I'm definitely getting that viscosity, that flow, but I'm also not getting a lot of nice, thick paint. So my paint is going on like watercolor. That is not what I want. I'm not doing watercolor right now, so that's not what I want. So I'm going to grab a little more of this paint, and you should have done that, or should be doing that. Pull a little bit more of this paint into the water. And this time, I'm going to be somewhere in between. I'm going to have a thicker paint. I'm going to swap these because I'm right-handed. I feel like I'm going to put my elbow in it. So I'm going to have a thicker paint with some water in it. And I might have to go back. And I'm going to try and get a clean edge that's not tearing. But also an intense enough color where it kind of matters. So I want you to experiment with that. You can see the difference if I bring it close up. The one is real watery and thin. And the one's a little stronger, and then the one's torn. So I want to think about that. It would also be good to have a paper towel. So I'm going to have some paper towels to work with. If you don't have paper towels, like an old rag works nice too. Um, I'm going to wipe my brush in the bottom, going the way I would flow if I wanted to, to paint something. But I'm not going to scrub it straight down to so the tip of the brush gets all messed up. When I do it, I'm going to do it like this, pull it up, drag it back and forth like this when I'm washing it. And I want to make sure no color comes off on the paper towel. Okay. So now I want to make orange, but I've only got red, yellow, and blue. So what I can do is I can mix red and yellow. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'll take a little yellow here. and I'll take a little red here, almost the same amount and mix them together. And what I notice is it's really red. And one of the things about paint is it's actually paint. It's pigment. It's not the concept of primary colors. It's an actual thing. And the yellow pigment is not very strong. So I need a lot of yellow to push back on that red. And I often say it's like having a cat and a mouse fight. If a cat and a mouse were fighting, you would need to have more cats, I mean more mice than cats, to make it a for, fair fight. So I start putting in more of the yellow, so the yellow's got a chance to actually fight against the, the red and create a good orange. And there's paint gets stuck up here on the brush. I'm gonna actually roll it and push some of this off because otherwise it's not fully mixed. And later on that color may show up when I don't want it to. So I wanna kinda like squeegee it off um, and then mix it correctly and make sure my brush doesn't have a lot of extra paint there. I'm going to paint a circle with this orange that I made. I'm going to make sure I've got a little bit of water in there. So I get a nice clean edge. Trying to make a circle with a clean edge. Not having a clean edge will go against your grade. Don't worry about the middle. Oftentimes people focus on the middle instead of focusing on the edge. It's the edge is the hard part to paint anyone can the middle okay so now I'm gonna wash my brush 
Notice how I didn't wash my brush before I went and got the yellow with the red, but I'm always, whenever I use red to get yellow, I'm gonna go off that one side. And so I'll have a side that I use um, for red. So I'm gonna kind of pinch this because I got a little extra paint on top on the edge and I wanna make sure it's all gone until there's no color coming out of my brush. Good job. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a green. Now if red is a cat and yellow is a mouse, blue is a dog. So I'm gonna get a big pile of this green here, I mean yellow here, and put it over here, maybe even all this. And then I'm gonna just take the corner of my brush and I'm gonna whip it in there and just get a little bit of blue and start mixing that in to see how that green goes. If it's too yellow, I can add a little more blue, but if it's too blue, it's hard to get, um, It's hard, I'll have to add a lot more yellow because the yellow is so weak compared to the blue. So I'm gonna start with this color here. Again, I'm rolling it to get the extra paint off the brush and then kind of like remixing it. And I'm gonna use the corner of this flat brush. I'm gonna try and create a corner here and start making a rectangle. Some of you guys have rectangles in your paintings, so you're gonna to need to know this, but you should all learn this. And I call this kind of green, this is like a golf course green. It's not like a real natural green that you'd find in plants. It's like miniature golf. It's not even like regular golf. So I wanna make sure that when I'm painting this, I'm not, um, I'm not having torn edges, and I wanna work quickly so that paint doesn't dry out on me. So I'm gonna get a little more blue and I'm gonna mix it into the screen, but only on one side. I'm not gonna mix the whole thing because I want some of that to stay later. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna start mixing it while it's wet, and this is wet and wet blending. This is how I'm gonna get a smooth transition, a smooth gradient between the two colors. And as I lay it in, and more of the paint comes off the brush, I'm gonna go back to the old color and start blending it together with this color. Now, if that color is, that old color is dry or gone, I might go back here and pick some more of it up and use it as a transition while this is wet. So I get a nice wet on wet transitional blend here. I'm gonna get a little more blue. I'm coming over here to finish this rectangle using the corner of the brush. Notice how careful I'm being when I wanna do the corner. Nice clean straight line. Don't wanna to have too much paint there. I'll have, it'll be too powerful when I go to mix them. Little red on me. Being aware of your paint and your painting is really important so you don't end up getting paint all over yourself or your home. Um, really be aware of what you're doing so you don't make a big mess. Okay, so now I've got a smooth transition from this light green to the dark green, it's more blue green. I'm gonna wash this up. Notice I did not mix black to it. I just mixed in more blue. Sometimes trying to make things darker with black will end up causing you a problem, so you don't want that. So I'm cleaning this before I go to the next thing. Now I've mixed red and yellow, mixed blue and yellow, so now I guess I'll mix blue and red together to create a violet. And not all violets are created equal because you notice I put out two yellows, two blues, and two reds. And that's because I've got a warm yellow, a cool yellow, a warm red, a cool red, a warm blue, a cool blue, and they don't all mix the same way. So if I wanted to make a nice violet, what I would probably do is mix this warm blue and the cool red. But instead I'm gonna take this cool blue that's got a little bit of green in it and I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to take some of this warm red 
It's got a little bit of orange in it, and I'm going to mix this here, and I'm going to mix them together. And remember, the blue is a little more powerful, so I'm going to get a little more red. And I'm going to mix them up. And what I notice is I do have a, um, a violet color. I'm going to add just a little water to it. Might have added too much. We'll see. Um, I've got a violet color, but it's a very dark and very neutral violet color. And part of why is that little bit of orange in the red and that little bit of green in the blue, those things mean there's yellow in there. And yellow is the exact opposite of what violet is because violet's red and blue. And so the only thing left is yellow. That means that the exact opposite the yellow is in there, and that's going to neutralize the color. By adding the opposite color, I'm neutralizing it. So I'm going to clean my brush, and I'm going to try this again. But this time, I'm going to get the warm blue here, and I'm going to get the cool red here. And you may not have these options, and you just have to work with what you've got. But I just want you to see the difference so that you can understand it. Okay? This time, my violet's going to be pure, and it's not going to have any um, counter color that's going to make it neutral. So this time, my color is going to be more intense. And I could have mixed it a little better. Some of the red was pure right there. And it's hard to see with the glare and far away, but when I take this up close... You can really see how this one's almost black, and it's neutral, and this one here has a lot more color to it. It's kind of hard to see, but um, you can see it. Here's the dried version of it, you can see from earlier, the difference in the color, okay? So that's that. Now I'm going to wash out this brush really good because the purple is strong right it's made out of cats and dogs so it's really strong and it could be a problematic if i don't clean it really well i'll pollute all my other colors so now i'm going to do something i'm going to get a pencil there's a regular pencil here and i'm going to draw a line and i'm going to draw i'm going to move over a decent way and i'm going to draw another line here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get clean, pure yellow. I'm going to paint a line over here, right over the, the line. And what I notice right up is the yellow is so translucent that the, the line does not dissipate at all. And translucent is like sunglasses. It means partially see-through. Then I'm going to grab some of this blue, and I'm going to go over this line. And while it's dark and subdues the, the contrast, it's still pretty translucent. I can still see that line. And if I was to hold it up, you'd see it better, but I'm not going to. I, you'll see it on your own paper when you do it. Clean the brush really good. And now I'm going to get some red. And paint this red over. Now what I'm noticing is that the red is the least translucent. It covers the line the most. But it also uh, isn't as dark as the blue, so the line might show a little bit. And it's still translucent. It's just not as translucent as the other ones, and that's important to note. So now I'm going to make some pink. And the way I make pink is I'm going to take a little red, and I'm going to mix it with a little white, and that's going to give me a pink. Maybe I did too much white, though, but that's okay. And there are lots of different pinks, and actually this is when you're really going to see the difference between the two reds. You see how this red's kind of purpley? If I try and make an orange out of this, the blue in it is going to get neutral. So I'm going to paint this pink across the line. And right away I notice a difference, and I notice that this is much more opaque and covers the line much better than the other colors. And that's because white is an opaque color. And white will dominate. So I want to think about how I can use white if I make a mistake and I'm painting a banana and I don't want all my pencil lines to show. I could paint that thing 50 times with yellow and it's going to show the pencil lines through. But if I want to get rid of them, I've got to mix a little white with what I'm doing and then 
let it dry, and then come back in with a stronger yellow if that's what it takes. Okay? So now I'm going to come with some turquoise. And remember, if this is going too fast for you, pause it, and then do your thing, and then keep going. So I'm going to get a little bit of blue for turquoise. And if I mix white with this, it will just be light blue. We could even try it. So that's light blue. I wouldn't call that turquoise. And I could add yellow to this, but if I add too much yellow to this, instead of turquoise, I'm going to end up with light green. So what turquoise is, is it's mostly blue, a little green, and um, a lot of white. So this is how I'm going to mix it. And I'm trying to get keep it clean, not get it mixed in with the other colors here. And I could add a little more white if I feel like it needs it. I'll make it more opaque too. Oh, I've got all this light blue on here. Remember, I've got to roll that off the brush and then mix it again so that my colors are fully mixed. All right. So now I've got this color. And I'm going to paint that over my line. And again, much more opaque than the other colors. In fact, this one covers the line almost completely. So I'm going to wash this out. Now I want to make brown. How do you think I make brown? Well, brown's a little tricky. And again, pause this video if you need to and do your work and then start it when you're ready. Brown is a neutral color. And when that's a neutral color, I know that it has all three colors in them, the primary colors of pigment, red, blue, and yellow, okay? Or some people say red, yellow, and blue. Um, those are the primaries. When I mix only two of those, I get the secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. Um, but if I mix all three, I start to get neutral colors, okay? And these are tints of um, colors that are primary or secondary colors because the turquoise is just uh, blue, green, and white. There's no, um, there's no red in it, and this is just pink is red and white. There's no other red, blue, or yellow, so it's not neutralized except for the fact that always adding white and black neutralizes a color. But now I'm going to make a neutral color. So I'm going to start, for my brown, I'm going to mix an orange, and I've still got some of my orange here, so I might start with that, but I'm going to freshen it up a little with a little more yellow, a little more red, liven it up. And now I'm going to take a little blue. And I'm just going to take a little corner of blue, because remember that blue is so strong, and I'm going to mix it in. And oh, I kind of went over and it's kind of too green. Do you guys see that? It's a little bit of a green brown. Adding some water because it was starting to dry out because I am using a little bit of an older color. So if it's too green, that means it's too blue and yellow and I've got to come back with red, the opposite color. And that's going to go too far again. So now I went too far red, so I'm going to have to add more yellow to orange it up. And then I'm going to come in with the blue to neutralize that orange. But don't go too far. You don't want to go overboard. You don't want to pass the color. Okay? If it's too red, try adding a little yellow. Too green, you're going to have to go back in with some red and play with it. Until you get some kind of a brown color you could work with. It's really an orange, a darker orange. And this could be used um, for a lot of different stuff in nature. And I'm going to paint that over the line. Now, that is a translucent color because it's really just all three of these translucent colors. Take some white, mix that with a little side of it, and you could see how much how this color is. And I've got some kind of a beige color, and I could get all kinds. My other one last time was darker and more um, neutral. This one's definitely more on the yellow side. And then paint that, get a little water. Keep that viscosity, that flow right. Make my circle here.
And this kind of color can actually be used for skin. And, and mixing a neutralized orange, leaning more on the red, leaning more on the yellow, leaning more on the white, I can get a wide range of human skin colors with that kind of neutralized orange. That's actually the secret to painting skin is that all skin is a neutralized orange, whether it's a darker or a slightly more red or a slightly more yellow version of neutralized orange, um, we're all neutralized orange. And even within one person's face, you might have more neutrality or more um, red where the blood vessels are closer to the surface or something like that, okay? All right, last thing, hopefully you followed along and been pausing and moving as we go. If not, you need to rewind and watch it so that you can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna mix a light blue here. I'm gonna mix, move this up so you, I have more room and you can see it. So I'm gonna mix blue and white. So I've got this color here and I'm gonna make a cylinder and I wanna think about the, the outline of this shape. So I'm gonna start with a curve on the top. See, it's tearing, so I need a little water. I'm gonna start with a nice smooth curve, like part of a circle, or an ellipse, really. I'm gonna go straight down. Well, the edge of this top of the sphere, the ellipse is also the side of the cylinder. I don't wanna have them like bumping out like a weird mushroom. And then I'm going to do a curve along the bottom. The bottom is sitting down on the table, so I don't want to see the bottom, but I will see the top because I'm looking down on this cylinder. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this white while it's still wet, mix a decent amount of white with this, get a much lighter blue. Remember to roll it so your paint's getting all mixed. Everything that's on the brush is getting mixed, and so you don't have big globs of paint that are going to sneak out of nowhere and get you. Now I'm going to take this top part and I'm going to paint it as an ellipse to show that the top is catching light. I need a little water, I can add it. My shape got a little weird down here and I'm gonna fix that later. Whoops, you guys can't really see that. So I'm gonna move my water out of the frame here. If I need to, I can jump in and do a little brush. If, if my big brush is making it too hard for me. I'm trying to work quickly because I don't want this to dry out. So I'm gonna take some almost pure blue, mix it just a little darker version, and I'm gonna come down here straight down the side of the cylinder, all the way down, because that's how cylinders are. And I'm not going to go right to the edge though. I'm gonna imagine some light sneaking around from the back and a little bit of lighter light is on the side here, just right along the side. But my paint is kind of dried in the middle because I'm working too slow. So I'm going to mix that middle color back up, and while this is wet, I'm going to get a wet to wet transitional blend so that as it comes around, the roundness of the circle, I'm going to have a transition of color here. I also might come in with a more intense pure blue down here while this is wet and blend it in so that I'm actually mixing on the surface of the painting, okay? And then, since the light is coming from this way, I know that because my shadow's on that side, I'm gonna lighten this color back up again, and I'm gonna do a band of light coming down here on this side. and I'm gonna try and blend that in while it's still wet. So 
Notice I'm using a combination of curved strokes following the curves of the ellipse and vertical strokes following the verticality of the, of the cylinder to support that form. Then I might come in here with an even lighter version and my small brush. I just cheat a little bit of light on the rim here to separate it from that highlight sign. Got a little bit of mushrooming on my ellipse here, which is the natural tendency to kind of bulge up on the top when you draw an ellipse and not make it as flat. Without painting a color in the background, I would not be able to fix this right now until after it's dry. Sometimes within the work, I can let some of that paint texture, that dry paint texture work for me. And sometimes I want to use a little water to smooth it down. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is put a shadow on this. And the table is white. If the table is yellow, dark yellow would be the color of the shadow. But the table is white, so my shadow is actually not going to be, uh, is going to be gray. But normally, my shadow would be um, a darker version of whatever the thing is sitting on. Okay? So I'm going to take a little blue, and I'm going to mix it into this brown. Because um, gray is just a neutralized blue. So we've got blue and orange neutralizing each other, making the middle neutrals. And that's super green. That, remember I told you I had a lot of yellow in my brown. So I'm going to add back some red. And I want it to lean towards blue. So um, as I go, I'm going to add more blue into this. And if it's too green, I'm going to add red to neutralize it back. And then I'm going to add more blue to push it more towards the blue. Because what my goal is, is try to get a bluish gray color. And I think that's pretty good. To test it, I'm going to add the white. Still a little bit green. There. So I'm going to add some red. Take some of the green out of it. Maybe even add a little more red. Now, if I, my paint pile starts getting so big that adding a little bit of color isn't working for me, what I will do is just start mixing a smaller pile within that pile, like we did when we shifted some of our other colors. Okay. So I think this is a pretty good attempt. And our purple, I'm using a slightly smaller brush, adding a little water to it, rolling all this extra paint off. So I've got a nice big pile to work from. Wipe a little bit of extra off here. My shadow's going to come off the bottom. The light's coming this way, so the shadow's going to kind of come out this way. Touching the edge. And then coming back here kind of implying the shadow of the cylinder. Now, the shadow is not a real thing. It's just blocking the light. And the more the light travels around the cylinder, the lighter the shadow can get. So up here, I might start to really lighten this shadow. And along the edge, I might lighten the shadow so that it's darkest in its core. So this core of the shadow will be darker than the outside edges. And then also, um, if I wanted to, let me lighten this a little more. I also don't want this shadow to have a hard outline. So I'm going to take a little bit of water, and I'm going to come through here, and I'm going to soften this edge, this 
transitional outside edge, mostly away from the object, because the closer the object, the more crisp the shadow will be. And up here, I'm kind of, I kind of made a mistake, so I'm trying to fix it, but I'll probably have to see how it looks when it dries, okay? So that's what you have to do. Um, it should take you longer than it took me. It should take you about 60 minutes, and, um, and then you'll be done, and you'll be able to turn that boy in. All right, good luck.